um, nice to be talking to you. This is a, a, a privilege for me, um, and uh, it's good to be connecting with, with the guys in, in, uh, uh, in Manchester again. I, I've um, been leading the church I'm in um, for a while. I, I often say I planted my church when I was four years old. Um, my, my parents were involved as well, uh, we, but we were quite a tight team. Um, and uh, I, th I like to think that I was the brains behind the, uh, the whole plan. Um, but uh, yeah, we, we moved uh, uh, to Brighton when, yeah, we're, we're four years old, the church began. So this is back in the very late seventies. Um, I, I moved away to, to study and travel and, and work and get married. Um, and then came back in 2006, um, started leading the church um, 2007. And, uh, and since then we've gone multi-site. Uh, we started doing that in 2011, I think, um, uh, with our first new site, which was in Shoreham, which is about uh, um, eight, 10 miles to the west of our, our large, our, our sending campus. Uh, and then we um, began the Hove site, uh, or sorry, no, we began the site in East Brighton at the race course a few months later. And then a couple of years later, uh, the site in Hove or South Hove, and since then, just this year, in fact, we've begun our first adoption site, effectively, uh, which has involved us um, connecting with a, a, a small Baptist uh, background church um, who've become our fifth site. And uh, that's still kind of in process, but it's it's more or less done. Um, so it's kind of the de decoration that he's doing now. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's where we're up to. Very good, very good. Colin, why don't you give us a an introduction to yourself as well. Yeah, I moved to Manchester 25 years ago. I have planted two churches in the south of England. And uh, I always say to people, um, I learned loads of things I wouldn't do again. Uh, and one of the things I realized is it was very lonely. And so I actually had a kind of dream really, which was to start uh, what uh, was a kind of multi-church thing. I, why not plant a number of ch church sites together, churches together? We had no terminology, which is why I'm making sure that I don't use present terminology. Uh, so we did that, uh, started eight uh, meetings, uh, of which we then, after a few years, they went to uh, independent churches, which was always our goal then. Six are still going and two closed down. And then having gone to America, come back, we started again. And uh, we're now, I think, six um, sites, seven, six, um, seven meetings um, in our second multi-site, which uh, we now call a multi-site because that's the terminology that people understand. So, uh, so that's basically my background, um, much smaller sites than Joel, more pioneering movement. Excellent, excellent. So uh, you guys are both relatively well established on the multi-site uh, journey, shall we say, uh, and have come at it from different angles. So like Colin just said, perhaps from a, us in Manchester, more pioneering angle, um, uh, at least, or that's a, which is a slightly poncy way of starting really with not very much whatsoever and then going multi-site with that. Um, so in Brighton, going from a, a much larger co church context, and so having to deal with different issues to us. Um, so uh, in that first leap, effectively, from going from one site to more than one, and Joel, it sounds like you got to three quite quickly, uh, but that going from um, your first uh, extra sites, the big question is, where did you get your leaders from in that moment? Um, we were um, in some ways quite... quite um, leadership rich because of legacy um and uh I, 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 we have fairly large experienced eldership that have been working together for a generation um under which i, I think they've created the kind of ecosystem uh for a lot of um good leaders to, to emerge and i suppose that because of our wider apostolic uh work and The of existing channel. You know, Brighton as a church. Um, I've just got a note saying my connection is unstable. Are you hearing me all right? Are we all right? Yeah, just keep going. 
Okay, sorry. I, I don't know if that's. I hope that. Yeah, hopefully you will be right. Um, we, I think there was some. It's, it's like there were kind of grooves in the track um, from our history of bringing leaders through to send leaders coming through and going. Most yeah, historically, it had mostly been going to other cities or other nations, and um, I think that when you have that kind of a, uh, um, a, a that kind of got into our DNA, that kind of culture. And so I think when I was taking on the church, we were probably still living at least in the sort of vestiges of that, that, that heritage where, where, where quite a lot of guys who come through expecting to potentially plant out and pastor one day. Um, and so there, there's some, something of that was hanging over us. Um, University City, we, we, we've been quite intentional with reaching students and connecting with um, potential young leaders that way and it's been a fairly fruitful kind of um, greenhouse for bringing leaders through as has our youth work um, historically um, and so we've had various kind of bases within the church from which to identify train and give experience to potential planters or site leaders and that's so I think that would be the sort of big kind of strategic piece that, that those, those sort of features of our our kind of the, 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 our anatomy as a church that have helped us. Interestingly, our first since, since you asked me about the first site that we planted, there would have been a few options as to who would have led it. Um, there were leaders living in the Shoreham area, elders in fact, who it would have been at least potent, you know, it was would have been reasonable to have imagined them taking it on as team leader in the new site. But we ended up actually asking someone who wasn't living in Shoreham to move out and do it because we felt that he had pro probably, we felt at that stage he was more like the guy I was looking for and um, probably had, he's a young, younger guy as well at that stage, a bit more uh, mixture of experience and time ahead of him. It seemed like a slightly better place. And so we, we went to him and asked him. We also had a sense of the prophetic leading us in that. There were one or two uh, pointers that helped us to feel peaceful that we should we should go to him first and and we did and, and it was a fairly big ask because it, it meant he had to uproot move his move his house and just talk it through with his wife and they, they came back to us really really up for it so that helped us very good so there's a, a sense that in the first wave of multi-site um there was a lot of people there you had a lot of options effectively um which is good. Colin, in terms of our, your experience, the twice through in Manchester of doing multi-site, where would you, where did you get your leaders for, from? Yeah, well, I definitely didn't have the options that Joel had because I moved up with another family yeah. and uh, we were 30 people and we thought, how do we grow? And uh, so I, I, I literally didn't have uh, a legacy of leaders, but what I realized I had was a lot of land. Manchester's a big place. 3 million people. And actually the thing that I had was uh, places where people could go. So effectively I, uh, I, I, I prayed and said, Lord, who would like, who, you know, call some people to come to Manchester and join us, not to build the church that I was building in South Manchester, but to start another site. So effectively, uh, I, I don't know if the word's right, but we leveraged a kind of church planted ethos which can be lonely and so kind of said well you can either go and do it on your own or why not let's partner together and build um, something that actually has the same name same identity but has a kind of mixture of pioneering but also teamwork and, and that really appealed to a number of uh, people especially those that, in my first uh, uh, time I did it to to guys who in, in their 30s who were um, kind of uh, realized that uh, actually they may not have been totally pioneers but they wanted to do something like that so yeah so that's how we did it it was uh, uh, saying we got land I could help you we could do something together I mean it's interesting the two answers there land and legacy actually um, <clears throat> it, and I think they're great things to recognize in in bringing through leaders and in multi-site particularly that as you expand as a multi-site, you actually create the potential for more land, don't you? Yeah. Uh, and actually then you begin to build legacy as well, which um, 
it's interesting. We, I think in Manchester, we've come to the legacy issue. Like what's the ecosystem, as Joel called it, in, in the last couple of years, probably, whereas we didn't have it early on. It's just really interesting. So what would help us next, I think, is to think about um, the sort of, well, what you're looking for in the site leader and that the leading a site is, a, depending on the way that you do multi-site, is, a, a, is relatively um, kind of new territory for churches and it requires a certain type of person. And it's probably quite easy to get wrong, um, the sort of kind of gifting you want. So, Colin, what, when you're looking for a site leader um, and it, well, your answer, I suspect, will be a bit different to, to Joel's because when we look for a site leader, they haven't got any people to start with. But what, what are you looking for? What's your gifting? Um, I'm, I'm looking for someone who's got a bit of edge. Um, I want someone who can create. Um, I also want someone who's teachable. And those two things sometimes are not compatible. Yes. Um, as, uh, so when I recruited you, Tim. Um, Easy, Tiger. <laughs> uh, just, uh, uh, yeah, I, you know, I wanted someone who could start it out in, in, uh, in the student land. And, and to do that, you needed somebody who had a bit of entrepreneurial edge, attitude, but also wanted to actually be taught. And so that is the sort of people I've been looking for. Um, and it's always a bit of a, a, a tricky thing because effectively um, pliable sometimes doesn't help me. <laughs> um, and so I, 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 that's, so that's, the, that's the way I've been looking, teachable, but also they can create. Yeah, that's very good. Uh, even though you managed to get a dig in there on me, um, Joel, what, what in, when you're looking for a site leader, what what are you thinking about? What are you looking for? So, can I just boring practical question? I can't see anyone now. Is that a problem at your end? Can you see? Does it yeah. matter? If we can hear you, you can hear us, and we can see you, so that's fine. So, I mean, not that you need to see me, but I can't see you, so I just I, yeah. As long as it's, um, I, I think um, I think I've actually sort of been on a bit of a journey as to this question. I think it's a, a pertinent one for us at the moment um, because I think that we've had to keep thinking about the profile of the classic site leader. I think the original wisdom I received was uh, from models coming from the States, um, which were mostly very, very helpful, but possibly in this respect, I would, I would slightly move away from the, the point I'm making is that um, central provision, as in the departments of the church that you want to be constant uh, or to some degree constant, you know, across the, across the sites, perhaps the preaching, the worship, you know, those, those features of church life that come from the, cent the central base um, can be enough, at least in theory, to carry the the health and the, the drive and the missional kind of strategy and vision for the for the whole church across all the sites and uh, when and if that is the case um it starts to make you think that really with a site leader what you need is someone who mainly has a kind of coordinating and pastoring gift that they are um not necessarily the people who are going to break new territory open and they won't necessarily be huge innovators. Um, they may not need to be preachers, for example. I mean, that's another side of the whole thing. Um, and uh, and if that's the case, it certainly it, you know, it means that you perhaps have more options because the, the, the gift mix doesn't have to be quite so sort of outstanding. It can be people who are you know good at coordinating a program and good at pastoring a flock. I mean those aren't those are big challenges and big gifts to have, but it's not quite as much of a stretch. And you can find a few more leaders if you dig around who can answer to that kind of profile. I think as time's gone on, I realize that the leadership gift, just as Colin puts it, the kind of edginess um, and uh, aggressiveness and innovation side of it 
is is actually still pretty fundamental. Um, and our site leaders have 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 thrived according to the degree that they've used those gifts, um, those sides of their personality, those sides of the gifts as well. I think if you um, aren't careful, you can end up with a, a, a multi-site situation where the drive and the innovation, the energy is expected and assumed to come from the senior pastor and the core of the church, the core, the core team, say. And, uh, and then you end up with site leaders who um, feel that their, their role is reduced to being um, people who kind of sort of need to keep things coordinated and sort of hold the line, um, which doesn't make necess- in most cases doesn't make for a very exciting environment for them and, and for the people that they're trying to gather. So I think actually that there's got to be some degree of opportunity for site leaders to to behave like church planters. And I guess the wisdom I received early on was tended to almost under emphasize that, that it was almost rather saying a site leader is someone who needs to keep that church planting instinct in check all the time mm. and, uh, and be as uniform as possible. And I get why they would say that because there, are, there is strength in some degree of uniformity mm. that there, there is so much to be said for consistency. I think that's what makes multi-site distinct. That's what gives it its USP. Multi-site is not the same as church planting uh, in the conventional sense. And that's one of the great strengths is how coordinated it is across the whole thing, how everyone is together, clear on vision, clear on strategy, clear on ministry philosophy, clear on branding and communications and calendar and program and diary and songs that we're singing and all the rest. Those are fair enough things to, for us to sort of work at and how do we coordinate as much as we should or can. But if it's all about coordination, I think we end up probably slightly kind of limiting the, the health and the, the potency of our kind of environment. So I think site leaders do need to be identified partly on the basis of how much they could, how much of a riot they could cause in a, in a <laughs> yeah, how much of a mess they can make. Um, uh, that, that, these have got to be guys with something about them in terms of, uh, of that energy too. So I, I think there's just a, there's a somewhat of a tension there that we've got to always be working through. That would be my comment. Yeah, no, absolutely. There's always a, a tension there somewhere in uh, bringing through leaders of multi-site. So uh, that, that's very interesting. Again, I think there's a, uh, we have both discovered in Manchester and Brighton, the need for creating space mm. so that leaders get to do the exciting things that is what, why most people want to lead. Mm. And then, but then also how do we, how do we make that unifying thing at the same time? Um. The next thing I was thinking about uh, for you two was, uh, I think you have, uh, you have both run a site. Uh, it, it may have just been the original one, um, but you have both run a site. And then um, I'm guessing, but I know Colin has, I'm not sure about you, Joel, have at some point handed over that site. Uh, and how, uh, because the, when the senior leader hands over to a site leader, but remains the senior leader, there are some boots there to fill. Um, and that can be a, a somewhat tricky thing to step up to. Uh, how you have navigated that journey, Joel? I'll start with you. By trial and error, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> we've learned from our mistakes. Oh, I hope we have. Anyway, I hope we have, because uh, we've made a few. Um, I, I, I think the relationship between the, the the senior leader of the church and the leader of the site that that senior leader is attending or you know, the, the, usually the, the the sending site um is is one of the things that that sort of keeps the church healthy and and it's a key it's a key relationship um and uh, honestly i think it has been a testing area for us uh, in a good way i think it's i think we've learned a lot and learned how to function wisely and learn to get parameters right learned what role is whose um, well, I think probably probably the key thing I'd say at the outset is just it is the sort of relationship that's worth working on, especially um, it's 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 uh, it's a priority thing to keep keep an eye on. Make sure that you're hearing each other, uh, that you're on the same page and that you're understanding strengths and weaknesses and listening carefully and so on. Um, I, I'd say I, I actually um, I, I think trying to think of the right way to, to put it because we we we've, we've, we have learned from one or two 
errors here, I, I'd say. Um, I'm probably making it sound more disastrous than it is, but I'm just aware of the, 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 the good question that you're asking. I want to make sure I serve you well. I think um, where, where you've got a, a, a kind of a complementarity of gifting um, between the two, uh, it's absolutely uh, ideal. And, and where, where you know that there's a sort of strength, you know, playing to one another's strengths and weaknesses and not too much overlap, um, you're, 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 off, you're off to a definite advantage there. Um, I, I've worked with, with um, site, site leaders who are in the site that I the, lead the site I'm in and where we've really flourished, it's been where we've able to just know, you know, gifting wise, this is where I need to let this guy just, just, just rip it up and just go. And I, I need to, um, uh, uh, to hang back and vice versa. I guess just those kind of plain conversations early on are quite important um, to sort of work that out. And sometimes you don't even need a conversation. It's just obvious. It's understood. Um, and I think that's key. I, I think I would say if you are leading the site that the senior pastor is in, and maybe someone listening to this now or one day will need to hear this, you are, you are asking or you've been asked to do a job with unique challenges. And you, you just need to be prepared to, to face those and uh, handle some of the character tests, handle some of the, uh, the, the call for a, a humble, submissive attitude at times when you, you, you might want to do something a certain way and you, you, know, you, you might look around the church, you might even notice that the other site leaders get to do things that you don't get to do. Um, that's a, that's a probably occasionally going to be a little bit of a, um, a, 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 a challenge, a test. And I think just knowing that those things are coming, that there's something unique about that role. But, but if you can do it, uh, it, is, it is, you're like Frodo with the ring. You're like, you are, there's something about you. If you can do that role and do it well, um, you, are, you, you are essential for the health of the whole church. Um, and uh, you know, I don't mean to put too much of a burden on you, but in the positive sense, I mean, I mean, you're, you're doing a very special job and it might occasionally feel like you're, doing a little bit of a humble thankless job but it's 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 the one that's helping you're doing as much for the church as anyone it seems mm. I hope that makes sense i just i guess i'm trying to emphasize the, the the vital nature of that that relationship and that role um but yeah i think complementarity and gift is key and good relationship is key yeah very good colin what do you think yeah i mean uh, uh, for me i have two two multi-sites the first one uh, we had a kind of sending church a congregation, which was our first one, which was the biggest one. I used to call it the kind of engine that kept the thing going. I think I was over precious about that. And uh, in a sense, probably because we knew that eventually everything would go to their own congregations, their own churches. Um, I, it made me even more precious about it. Um, uh, and I don't think that was ultra helpful. It, it wasn't easy for people to take over. In fact, the reality is um, I had to move out eventually uh, to make that to make that happen. Um, second time round, actually, because um, we started a little bit more with knowledge, uh, you came, Tim, you had started, and actually the site that you planted actually grew quicker. So effectively, the centre of gravity change i think that was very helpful and it's ended up that you can't really now in all our sites say which is the most important um, and that, that is very helpful because uh, uh it means for myself i don't need to lead a site um, and i don't feel ultra precious about anyone which is a very different mindset than i did uh before and i think effectively that's a help I, also realize my personality is quite strong when you're on you know 70 people's sites so that. i have to deliberately sit midway and uh, when uh, and, and not over interfere when it's not relevant and uh, know what is really relevant <laughs> Oh, that statement was so loaded <laughs> actually uh, i i was thinking while joe was talking and listening to you there, actually, remember, because I've, um, I'm a site leader in, I lead two at the moment, and uh, but I remember when it was just the two sites, and 
I, you know, I was starting and I remember walking around to the back on a Sunday evening, just talking to people after the service and people would be wandering up to Colin and asking him what he does. And he would be saying, oh, well, I lead all of CCM, which was true and a good answer. Uh, and then they would start asking him questions about the church there in Fallowfield. And I remember him saying oh, straight away, oh, no, that's that's Tim's in charge here. You go and ask Tim. <laughs> um, and so at the time, I, I, it was actually quite it was very helpful uh, as a site leader. Uh, I also realized you were dodging a workload, but uh, it was, it's, but actually it was true and it was the right thing. So yeah, it's just quite interesting, isn't it? So I guess it actually leads us quite nicely towards the other, the other um, question I wanted to ask you guys. We've talked about like the first wave of leaders, really how you hand over uh, from being the senior pastor that runs a meeting and that's it to, um, to overseeing others and allowing other people to lead. Uh, and so we've got through our first wave of leaders. How do you then bring through the rookies in, in a kind of now established multi-site context? Uh, how do you bring through the people you think, oh, you could be brilliant at this? Um, how do you create that space? Uh, and w- what's your kind of thinking behind that? Um, uh, Joel, what, what, how would you bring through the rookies? I think the way we've tried to do it is to multiply services within the site. Um, and that's that's certainly... Okay. When, when it's worked, it's really worked. Um, it's given opportunity for the next level to, to grow. Um, and um, <clears throat> it's uh, uh, also built a certain kind of, it's built plurality into each site's culture in terms of team. And, um, and it's, it's just given us yet another channel for leadership development. Um, in our story, um, what's also helped for us is that we continue to plant churches. So while we're planting sites in our own city, uh, in the same time stretch, we've planted churches in uh, three, three other cities so far, and we're going for a fourth and then a fifth in the next sort of 12 months. So we're, we are, uh, pro- we're finding that we've got other grooves in place too, beyond our own. Um, now, the other thing that's worked, I think, so far in our favour is that multi-site has been a an excellent uh, training ramp for multi-city, and so uh, pretty effectively, all of our church planters into cities beyond Brighton have led either a site or a service in Brighton, um, and so that's just it's just given us that that kind of. Um, um, adventurous kind of play, playground beyond the one we're in uh, or you know it's given us another maybe a better metaphor be like it's given us like the climbing frame's got a few higher bars on it that, that, that you can kind of be ambitious about in terms of leaders who feel that call to to uh, to planting in a new city um and that with the with the multi-service thing has just given us you know a kind of a almost just sort of a a straight trajectory of um, leadership roles which are increasingly stretching and which end up with you potentially taking your family and planting yourself in a different city. Um, when it works, it works really well. I'd say that we're at a stage where we're having to regroup a bit and uh, learn uh, to, to build again because um, only one of our sites currently has multi-services, uh, has more than one service. Um, and we would have liked it to have been more at this stage. And so we, it, we have less, less of the opportunities that I think you're asking about mm. uh, to, to bring through the rookies. And I think that that means that we have to find other um, contexts in, within the life of the church um, besides site leadership or service leadership. And, and there are, you know, you, you find them that there are uh, all kinds of, you know, I mentioned youth and student work earlier on. Um, and there's many others. And I think our pastoral network and our, our running of small groups and potentially sort of overseeing of small groups. So these can be some of the, the, the channels, you know, that, that, that we we can use as well. We, we have done. Um, so, yeah, we're bringing through trainees still fairly, fairly, um, uh, fairly intentionally. But I, I, I think we're in as a, in a, I think we are as a church in a slightly uh, I think we're in a, a pruned era, a, a season, shall we say, where it's like we're, we're having to, we're longing to push forward a bit more. And maybe if you ask us in a couple of years, we'll be back to, you know, bringing leaders through quicker. And, and uh, um, so yeah, that'll be our, our story. No, very good. 
uh, the thing I've in observing you guys from a distance, the the planting into the other cities and how site leaders have come through uh, to then go off and plant in other cities. I, I just think is very exciting. I think that's a, mm. one of your uh, big strengths to yeah. affect into a continent. That is brilliant. Colin, um, uh, bringing through rookies, what's your kind of philosophy and thinking behind that? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, because we have sites from 20 to people to 70 people, I mean, 70 is where uh, we kind of try to get to, um, that is uh, an easier gig for more people to come through. Um, so I think we have kind of two, op two, two things really going. One is our very pioneering ones, which we start kind of midweek. Now that gives a bit of space uh, for people who've got an entrepreneurial edge and maybe not so pastoral, actually, to because they're, 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 they're gathering their own people and uh, they can learn. And so, uh, so that's it's just fascinating, the people that can come through that way. And we've got one or two, as you know, doing that. I think the other side of it is uh, when a, a senior leader moves on, either to do another site, which is in our case, well, two people are moving on in our, in our case, to do other sites. Um, I think the challenge, and I've noticed this around the nation as well, to replace them is sometimes quite a challenge because they've built a community, even though it's a, a multi-site and there's a common vision, people still gather to a mixture of the local and the big. And to actually find someone to replace them is a challenge. I think our strategy of only having 50 to 70 people makes it slightly easier to gather those in uh, because it's just an easier gig to lead that number than it is 150 and I've noticed uh, some multi-sites where it's 150 200 a congregation very hard to replace um, because you need a, a level of maturity uh, that you have with your first generation and your second generation have to gather it so for us I think uh, I say we've got probably four, five this year coming, or the last 20, you know, last year, year and a half, have come through to actually take on a site where people have either gone on to something new or to, to actually serve another site. So I feel that's been, uh, it's, it's still a challenge, but it's a slightly more managed challenge, I think that would be uh, just by the nature of the, the, the way we do it. Yeah, it seems to, I mean, it's, there are a lot of variables in there in terms of the leaders that are around, but also the type of congregation that they, if they're taking over. Yeah. So we found that in Manchester with two different ones where the leader's changing. We know that one needs to be someone with experience and one, because of the nature of the people there, actually probably a bit more robust. Somebody coming through um, is going to be a simpler uh, it's more will work there for, in a way it wouldn't at the other one so yeah it's a it's not a simple thing to do for sure um okay well so some questions are beginning to come through so we'll we'll move on to the questions all of them around the the idea bringing through leaders and how we create space for them and if you're listening on this and uh, you can ask questions in the chat function or the q a function actually and uh, on facebook as well um and the first question uh, that i want to go to is when you bring through a site leader, um, often these are people who have uh, the ambition and calling is the words for themselves, uh, which is good and right uh, about maybe being a, a senior pastor or leading their own thing um, and not and kind of coming out of the multi-site and how you help them with that to manage it in terms of calling and ambition and how you help them through that journey. Uh, uh, Colin, I'll start with you on, on that one. Yeah, I, this is, I think, a really quite um, a challenging one because you want people who have got that call, especially when you try to create new sites. Um, but also, they do feel frustrated with the constriction that a multi-site, you know, has. And so, I think part of the challenge is actually the other leaders understanding the the nature of what is happening. Because I think sometimes I can cope with that and some of my other site leaders can't. So you get a situation where someone's edgy, 
They want to have innovate but within the, you know, and they want to push boundaries. And actually, sometimes I'm thinking, okay, it doesn't really matter. That boundary is not sacrosanct. But some of the other leaders are basically saying, what are they doing? They're, they're, tr they're trying to overchange it. So I think I've, I've had to learn that it's not just about the way you're in, the way you're handling the person who's got obviously a, a track that will end up leading a church somewhere, but also helping the other site leaders and elders understand some of the tensions that are around in that, because you don't want to clamp people down because it's a trading opportunity, but you also don't want to fragment the church. So I think for me, um, it's just navigating those systems and also understanding that if it's somebody got a call, don't hold on to them too long. Don't get them frustrated. Let them see that this is a season. Um, I think is really important. I think if you hold it too long, everybody gets frustrated. Yeah, yeah very good. What about you, Joel? I think um, so far, um, I think it's probably it's, it's been a perhaps a case of being as as real and open as we can about the 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 pros and cons and the, the, the benefits and costs of staying versus those of going um, so that leaders with that sense of call have their eyes open as to the 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 the, the expectation of what would be lost and what would be gained um, in their in their experience in their lives and ministries by, by, by moving on um, and I, I think that will tend to separate the, the, the sort of the, 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 the categories quite helpfully because I think it means that the guys who, who say, no, I, I just know this is, I'm going to Canada, as we have with Rich Crosby, or I'm going to Amsterdam, as we had with, with, uh, with Matt, um, or even Neville going to Berlin, in our case, it, it, it's... Uh, it, it, it's it's a it's so clearly something that that they 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 know that they've got this from God. It, it, it's they're looking some of the disadvantages and challenges right in the eye as they go. So I I think just being very open, say look that, that, that that's that sense of I I can imagine guys who might have I think probably in the in a way I'm thinking I would want all of our site leaders to be people who who might as well. In, on a on a certain level <laughs> have been able to go and plant somewhere else that I to some extent that's kind of what I'd be looking for but but it would have taken a very clear call in their case for them to pioneer something in a new city they know it's, it's not just a question of competence and gift profile but it's a it's a specific call issue um because I, I kind of want guys to if they are staying to stay thinking I could go, but I, 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 I want to stay here because I know the value of our brotherliness, of our uh, comradeship, of our close partnership in this city. And I, I don't want to yield, yield that up lightly. And I guess I, I hope that that's the case. I think well, I've got less experience and years in this than Colin. So I think we may have some of our, our lessons still to come in this area. But I can think of one or two guys if I think of one one site leader particularly who I, I would imagine is in this category you know he could easily go um, uh, and, and I, I think that what the way it works at least at the moment is that I know he is his passion and zeal and sense of court is, is being clearly worked out it's not there's there's enough on his plate I think as well as that we we are we kind of wanting to monitor these these leaders in terms of, you know, are they being challenged? Are they being, are they freshly challenged? Are they being stretched? If they are ticking over, we would feel a sense of responsibility. We'd feel like, oh, wow, okay, that's not good. Here's a site either that's kind of just sort of, it's it's become a bit easy for them or it's become a bit dull for them or um, we want them to feel, if we sense that they're not stretched, um, that's a bit of a thing and we'd want to watch is there anything else that we could ask them to carry now is that are they could because they pick up responsibility for the whole church now so pretty much all of our site leaders 
carry macro responsibility as well as micro. Um, and I don't know if that's good or bad practice. I don't know if every church does it that way, but we, that's what we do it that way on purpose because we feel it, it's it good. It scores on a few levels. I think most of them, they appreciate that. They, they, they like the sense that they're, they're feeling the weight of the whole thing as well as the, the local thing. Um, so I, yeah, those would be some initial responses to that. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. No, the, yeah. Very good. I, the question of la legacy and land comes in a bit again, doesn't it? In terms of the creating space, but then having mm. to deal with the, the sit, the kind of the, what exists and finding their place in it. Um, very good. Right. There's a question that's come through, um, which is a, a good one. So we'll go with that. It says, uh, when there is an overlap of gifting of the senior leader with the leader of another large growing site and where that overlap can create um, tension or conflict between the two, how do you deal with that to minimize, or effectively they're talking about minimizing damage, but uh, how could you actually use that for uh, generating growth as well? And Colin, I'll, I'll pitch to you first on that one. Um, um, can you give it to Joel? I just want to think it through. <laughs> well, Joel looked like he was thinking. He yeah. had his thinking face on. And Colin, you, you are, <laughs> your, your uh, expectation of my ability to think on my feet is obviously very high. Um, I, I think, let me think, I, I'm trying to sort of make this real by looking back on some experiences that are relevant to that. Could, Tim, could you just try and reframe it a tiny bit for me? Is that, I, I yeah, think let I, me think on my feet a little bit. <laughs> I, I mean, maybe, it, so maybe let, let's pitch back to when they're at, you're at the early stage and there's two sites. Yeah. And so really in that stage in the multi-site journey, you're working everything out as yeah. to whether there are even going to be more uh, mm. And then you may, maybe the senior leader leads one of the sites still and someone else leads the other one uh, and managing that relationship, yeah. actually, especially if the new site accelerates. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. And I think that's a, that in itself is an is a important dynamic to anticipate because it almost certainly will happen. Yeah, uh, probably. Uh, it's, I think it would be unusual for a new site not to look a lot sexier for the first 12 months than the, the sending site. Um, it's that's always been our experience the, the, the newer a site is the quicker it's growing and uh, the more it's making the sending site look a bit tired mm -hmm. <laughs> and for us the the, 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 the it got, got a bit got a bit acute when we planted our our third new site we the, the sending site in the center of Brighton I would say in we took years to, re, to sort of recover our mojo um, and um, we fully have now in terms of the health of the site. We still want to grow a lot more, but in terms of the health, it feels like it's flourishing again. But that took years, and it can be uh, a bit of a thing to kind of look around the church and say, "Well, these other ones are the ones where it's all happening." Um, that's that's a, that's a challenge on a few levels. I think in terms of the leadership relationships, I haven't known that to be. A difficult one yet because I think somehow we've met I think the site leaders who've hit their hit their growth curve and all the excitement and the the, the novelty of that and the the, the 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 atmosphere of that I think they've been I think God's been gracious to us that they, they, they've kept humble they've not they've not allowed it to become a cause for um sort of celebrity status or anything any kind of eager mania so I think mm. I think it comes back again to like my previous answer about relationships. Um, I think making sure that you feel you're on the same mission, that you're on the same page. I think looking through those, facing those realities, you know, knowing that, okay, this is likely to happen. The descending site will, will suffer, will feel a little bit the tiredness of this. Let's be patient, let's be humble. Let's not misread these statistics. Uh, let's make sure we're being wise with the money. Let's, let's, Let's uh, let's have a, a, a macro a macro budget plan rather than sort of start thinking. Well, because I'm tearing away with my tendons, I should be able to spend X, Y, and Z without even being accountable about um, macro budget. Uh, those sorts of things I think help us to stay in the in the room on the same page. And I, I feel that that quality, that relational, that sort of posture of team player mentality, teamsmanship is, as I guess it for us, it's probably been the vital element um, because it's, 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 it's been the reason we've been able to see or, or sometimes a bit of a variety of experiences, but we've stayed one. 
Um, and I think that's you can't assume that you need to build for that. Very good. Yeah, but I think just um, now I had a bit of time to think. John's been better on his feet on this, and I was a bit like Joel, that needed a reframe. But I think the overlap is it's interesting on your first two sites or even three sites. There's a camaraderie of everybody feels like they're learning together. So I feel like uh, that actually helps. It, and so uh, it's almost like it's a big pioneering thing. I think wherever the challenge comes is actually the next few people coming in who are coming into something a bit more established. And in fact, and you forget that, I hate the word bureaucratic, but you've actually established a lot of things. And actually, you think, well, these are norm, but the first two or three are, are, are in the process of the establishing. Right. And then the next ones come in, uh, and we're finding that now, who actually have gifts and have got uh, ability to shape, but, and I, but actually have less <coughs> potential to shape than the first two or three people in. And I think that is, so there's an overlap there of shaping which I think we are uh, realizing that actually, in a sense, the more multi -site, more sites we're doing, there's a kind of lim a diminishing return, a little bit, if you're not careful, of actually the way that they're shaping the whole. Now, like Joel, we get people right across and try to help them to, to be engaged. But, you know, we've written a book now, our cultures are set <laughs> with, uh, you know, we have a kind of shape. Very good. But that shape has taken three, four, five years to create. Yeah. So I feel that's probably more where some of the tensions are, that overlap of gifting. Yeah. Um, but obviously, and it's, it is to do with um, that whole thing that Joel said, being a team player, and actually being the point person who actually um, can make decisions and, and being the kind of senior leader. Yeah. So um, I think that's for us some of the things that we are realising now on our sixth site, that actually um, you can have someone that you need and who's got a real entrepreneurial gift, but actually... I'm realizing they're quite constrained, mm. more so than you were, Tim, when you came for our second side. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, one of the other questions we've had is the difference between bringing through the leader for your second site and the leader for your eighth. And uh, I was reading it and thinking, well, I effectively, that was me. I led the second site. And actually, the difference is the, the person who leads the sixth, seventh, or eighth uh, has to deal with me and you yeah. and two or three other site leaders. Yeah. all of whom are, are relatively opinionated about the way we do things. Whereas when it was just me, me and you could just argue, um, yeah. which I would lose most, but I'd win some of them. Whereas yeah. the, the guy leading the eighth is really not going to win very many arguments unless we're careful and we create something where actually they are allowed to speak in and they can bring some, some influence. Yeah, Joel, did you have some, you're nodding away furiously if you have any additional thoughts. I forget you can see me and you go, I can't see you. Um, I, that's exactly, I think as those two comments were, were so, so wise. I, I think um, it's, it's, it's interesting because I think some of the models that we've been inspired by would um, use the momentum and the uniformity of scale as a positive argument and sort of say, you know, when you get to 40 sites, which I, I, I think in, in some cases in the States, I don't know how many uh, Craig Rochelle's Life Church has got, uh, but it would be dozens. And I, I'm, I'm, you know, I've had the privilege of spending time with one of the, the executive pastors from there. And uh, they, they would tend to even talk the language of, you know, we we've basically know what we're doing. Um, if you, if a, if for someone who's new in life church is a new site leader or someone wants to become a site, or, you know they think they can do it better than us. It's a bit of a joke because it's like you know, you know, we we you know we are, we've kind of if you're doing it differently than we are, 
um, you're going to have to be very impressive to, to over, overcome our model because we're, it's working in 39 other places. Why would it not work with you? Why would you want to tweak what's working 39 other places? Um, and I think that I mean, it's, it's, it's a, that's a, there's something about, you know, there's a, a common sense about that, that that's uh, fair enough. But I, I, I think um, I'm sure that they themselves would, would, would nevertheless hear the point that Colin's making. And, and because I think it's so right that actually that, that we, we, we <laughs> just the fact that the biblical model is body, um, members playing their part. And, and I think even in the corporate world, the reality is that people, directors and, and uh, the CEOs will, who know, you know, have got longevity will tend to say that they've, they've intentionally create, created environments that are uh, to some extent a little bit different on purpose. They've intentionally started branches, started departments, started projects and, and lines that break a few rules it just in, in terms to help with learning lessons, the kind of laboratories, if you like. And if anything, multi-site ought to create opportunities for us to do that a bit. So I think it does come back to a little bit of wise intentionality at the center for overseeing leaders to think, okay, th there's a certain uniformity that's good and essential. There's a certain uniformity that's potentially dangerous. Um, and I need to know the difference between the two. And I need to uh, uh, be genuinely hungrily looking uh, for gifts that God is wanting to bring in that might actually shape the culture. But as you say, it's way easier to shape the culture if you were part of this thing from the ground floor. Um, and if you're joining it sort of eight sites in, yeah, you, you, you're not, your voice is less likely to be heard. So um, it's, it's, I think it's right to, to be a bit intentional looking for those, those voices. They may actually be key for the future of a, of a healthy prevailing multi-site church. Very good. No, it's great. Uh, fascinating discussion. We've got a few minutes left, so we'll just do one last question um, that has come through. Uh, and I, I guess this speaks into the desire to bring through the second and third wave of leaders. So once the first wave of multi-site is done, that we can do more sites. Uh, and really, it's helping those leaders who you've uh, appointed in power to lead sites. How do you help them to bring through other site leaders, uh, particularly perhaps if they've been they're hungry for responsibility and authority and all good things that we want them to do and space to create. How do you help them bring through other leaders? Uh, and Colin, I, I will start with you again on this one. Joel did well thinking on his feet. Yeah, I think that's a big challenge <clears throat> because not everybody is good at bringing through other leaders. Hmm. And, uh, and actually there's a, um, I, when I look at somebody, I can see something in them through a kind of, um, even if they look a bit ropey, <laughs> I could, I think sometimes, well, not even sometimes, more often than not, a site leader or um, tends to want to look at, find someone that's a little bit more ready-made. It's an interesting dynamic. So I feel like the answer, part of the answer is I get involved in helping them find people. I think I don't rely on them doing it themselves. I think that's um, because I think I've got a gift for that. I know I have a gift for that. And I know sometimes I've found that uh, site leaders and even the church pastors generally are sometimes a bit blinded to the fact that they were rookies at some time. They, they, they kind of forget that someone took a chance with them because uh, they didn't see it that way. They saw themselves as a ready-made leader. They didn't actually see themselves through the, the eyes of the congregation and someone else. And I think, uh, so that for me is it's really important that I have access to each congregation. Yeah, very good. Joel, what do you think? I think... Um, uh... It's, it's, I'm going to be a bit boring again and basically completely agree. Uh, I think I think actually for the senior leader that that you could argue that, that becomes their main job or at least part of it um, because it's uh, because there is going to be a unique uh, potentially a unique gift in that area 
um, that the, the team leader, maybe there's somebody who actually does have an apostolic call or an apostolic gift on in them. And, so, you know, if that's true, then really they need to be called upon to, to get busy amongst the church, get amongst their find where, where are the, the, the gifts that God's raising up? How can we identify the people that are going to take this thing on? I've got that gift of, uh, you can, you can really flourish. And uh, I, I, I think to, it may, it sounds kind of maybe sort of idealistically correct to sort of imagine every site leader being equally skilled at identifying their, you know, it sounds a bit like cell church or, G12 or something some of these models that have come out that they they, they kind of work like clockwork if if, mm. if only they did but in reality that that they're just it's not true you know that there's there are some who are gifted particularly at that and even when they are gifted at that sometimes they don't see it the same way so you think of a Paul and a Barnabas you know both functioning with an apostolic gift disagree over a trainee and end up you know that can ends up being quite costly um, and, and so I think it's, it is important that we, I think this is probably for me, one of the areas where you have to, we, we especially do require some, uh, some grace and some hum humility that, that, uh, site leaders allow senior leadership to speak quite strongly into, um, I really see, I really do want you to receive, uh, this, this guy or this girl. I feel like there's something on them that you just need to allow them to be brought through especially or and that because that yeah that that you might have a special capacity to identify grace in people um uh, so that's not that i i feel i'm only underlining what colin's saying but i think that would be my i i think i i think i just this is where it comes back to team so practically the impact of my my answer is that i would say the best work that i do and we do in terms of identifying the next site leaders is we, we do it together so we, we, every, most of what we do really in terms of like working to bring leaders through is really about us as site leaders coming together, senior team coming together, talking, praying, bringing guys in, bringing people in and watching and, 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 and so that we're on the same page. It's not, that's not being farmed out. Um, it's because it, I don't think it should be. Very good. Very good. Well, a, a really interesting discussion today, how we, create space to bring through leaders in multi-site the, the the big benefit obviously of multi-site is that we can do that but it actually it is there is a lot of uh, tension is a good word there's a lot of things pulling in different directions when you bring through site leaders and then the next wave of site leaders um so it's been really interesting well it's we've been going for an hour now so that is plenty of time so if you are listening or watching this or if you're uh, listening on the podcast later um, go to the website, it was the broadcastnetwork.org um, for lots more content for how we sign into conferences, even how you can buy a book. That's how good that website is now. And please do buy a book uh, when you go there. Um, and so, yeah, that would be great. Thank you very much, Joel, for your time. It's much appreciated. Uh, Colin as well. Thank you for your time as well. Uh, and we will finish there. So thank you, everyone, for listening. 